it's no secret that COVID-19 is taking a toll on everyone, including post-secondary students. Many students are struggling this semester with the idea of tuition fees rising, but services seemingly going down. Many students are stuck taking only online courses, but are they still able to access other services at the university, like counseling services if they needed it, for example? We're going to find that out right now. Our next guest is Jennifer Ellis Toddington. She joins us from Skype. She's a registered psychologist and manager of the University of Lethbridge's Counseling Services Office. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm really glad to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm sure that it looks a bit different right now at this, this semester at the campus on the U of L with many students not there. Many of them are taking part in classes online only. I think you gave me a stat. What was it? 86% of the students are actually online students this semester? Yeah, 86% around there of the classes are online and, and people are engaging in online student learning. So the majority is online this term with many of those students being first year ones. So. Absolutely, yeah. So that must be a little bit different for them not having that full campus experience. So what I wanna find out from you is since you're at the counseling office, is the counseling office open at the university? Can students still get the support they need during this time of COVID when the university is sort of just operating at limited capacity right now? Yes, the university counseling office is actually open and running at full capacity. We physically aren't open, so students can't walk in to our office. However, we have all of our counselors up and ready to meet with students online. So all of our services have moved to telecounseling. That's either Zoom or phone sessions. And an interesting stat, um, I actually got some stats for this interview that around our numbers since COVID, um, we've actually seen a 30% 37% increase in counseling appointments this year from March um, when the pandemic hit to September um, for counseling appointments as compared to last year. So that's an interesting stat. So students are still definitely reaching out. So why do you think it has increased? Do you think it's because of the, the COVID-19 pandemic? Is it causing a lot of stress, do you think? Yeah, I think um, definitely at the beginning of the pandemic um, across uh, counseling services, there was a bit of a dip in services as students were just scrambling to kind of figure out their lives and having to go back home and, you know, leave residents and things like that. Um, but as the summer progressed, we noticed a lot of an increase in need. And so we actually implemented things like our uh, pandemic support group and mindfulness for pandemic care, which were really popular we had a book club in the summer that students really liked engaging in just to connect. So we actually saw an increase in our interest in group counseling and workshops. Wow, and what did, what did that look like? Um, so I guess you're all on Zoom together, basically. Yeah, we were kind of like all of us thrown into Zoom overnight. And, you know, actually I think some students appreciated a little bit um, of the anonymity, just joining a Zoom group. It was a little less intimidating for a lot of students. It's quite convenient for students to do online counseling. They can do it from their home if they, they have a safe private place to talk. And, you know, actually being online right now, we increase our capacity to serve students because we don't have to do a lot of cleaning in between sessions. And, you know, so we can actually see more students by being online right now. So students that are taking courses online, are they being reminded that there is help still available to them? Because they're not there at the campus, right? So they're not seeing the posters or they're not seeing the, the counseling office there to remind them. How are they being reminded that, that yeah, you, there's still help here for you? We are trying our hardest to reach out to students. So we've contacted the uh, Students Union group. I've done uh, Facebook interviews. We asked them to promote our services as well as our main ULEF um, social media like Facebook and um, Instagram. So we are trying to reach the students. A lot of us, our work is word of mouth. Friends tell friends, and we definitely get, you know, service that way. Um, but we are really just trying to stay on top of student mental health needs. Like, they are definitely evolving. And so things that we were doing at the beginning of the pandemic has changed. So they used to want to maybe talk more about the pandemic, and now they're a little bit bored of it. 
honestly. So I think we all are. Fall, exactly. They're like, no more pandemic <laughs> right. support group. So this fall, we're just trying to offer a variety of group counseling and wellness workshops. We have over 10 that we're offering this term. So things like, again, mindfulness is very popular. We have an anxiety and depression workshop. We have connection and support groups, to name a few. There's a bunch on our website. So students can, you know, interact with our services as well as personal counseling, which is always the most popular and most requested service. Right. That, yeah. would, be, that would be that one-on-one -on -one service that you provide. Yeah. 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 Now, how many, now you yourself are a registered psychologist. How many psychologists are working there in, in the um, counseling office? We have um, clinical social workers as well as registered psychologists, and we have a robust intern program where we train um, masters of counseling students. We have 10 uh, counselors and we have four interns right now. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So that's, that's a really great support group that uh, the students have, absolutely. Now, when they're, they're in the, the group sessions, uh, what's the capacity for that? How many can you have in at one time? Um, we look to around about 10 students per group. That's a good number. We can go up to 12, depending if it's a wellness workshop. So, okay. yeah. And then to uh, sign up for that, they can just go through that online. And what's the wait like for it? Can they get in right away if they need it? Right. Right now, we're actually pretty good for our wait times. We're around a week. As a semester gets busier, we usually look to around two to four weeks for students to get in, which is very, very good compared to community resources. So we have pretty good opportunity. It's free. It's confidential for university students. Are you finding that students are missing that in-person experience at the university? Yeah, yeah, and it makes me really sad. At the beginning of a term, you see a lot of the energy on campus. Yeah. And so actually, um, we are looking, you know, as we're hearing more and more people are getting Zoom fatigue, um, we're really looking at how can we get out to the students and create opportunities to connect. And so we're looking at different things right now, um, different peer led um, outreach opportunities for students to get together in the community or on campus. So we're looking at those things, possibly bringing group counseling on campus, um, if we can get permission to do that. So different things we're looking at, we're always looking at how can we evolve? How can we be creative and responsive? Because this is new for everyone, so. Yeah, absolutely. And I would imagine that maybe some of the stress is caused by just having that lack of interaction with people, especially if you're a student that just graduated high school, you didn't get a normal graduation, and now you're this is your first year of university, and you're not really experiencing it in its full capacity. That's got to be a little bit depressing, I would imagine. Exactly. I yeah. Mean, I mean, even within our community, um, I was talking with private practitioners and community agencies, and there's a, a real demand for mental health support, and experts are predicting that. Um, and if you think about it, we've got multiple losses, right? Loss of uh, rituals, loss of routines, loss of um, isolation, um, loss of connection. So, and collectively, our society, you know, is experiencing uncertainty. So those are all things that are weighing on us, plus financial stressors for students, for the whole community. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. So what, what advice are you giving these students who are sort of suffering from that lack of connection and that are coming in with these issues? You know, it's tough. It's tough as professionals because we're all experiencing it as well. So I think just listening, um, supporting, um, helping them get creative. Um, around what they're doing to promote their mental health. You know, we used to have these things, what could you do now? Um, a big thing is creating boundaries and regular routine. Structure is one of the best things we can do for mental health, for depression and anxiety. So those types of things, you know, telling them about opportunities. We have clubs on campus still, they're running. We actually have this awesome um, peer-led um, learning mentor program that's just started up where they're called the accountability crew and um, they meet with students weekly to make sure they're on top of their studies so there's so many things happening at the university so um, and we actually have intake coordinators working in our office now who if you call if you email us or call us they do an intake right on the phone and they'll tell you about all the different things happening at the U L as well not just in our department but in many different departments 
Okay, well, that is so good to know. I didn't know there were still social activities taking place on campus. So pe people are yeah. allowed to actually, if you're a student, you can actually go there. It's not well, like it's... it depends. I, yeah, lots of the club things are happen happening virtually. Yeah. And there is restricted access to campus. There are certain areas and certain groups. So, yeah, right. not, not a lot of open access. Yeah. Okay. Now, what are the signs that family and friends should maybe look for if their student could be suffering from anxiety or depression? I mean, the number one thing we always say is isolating. Um, that's a bit tricky in a pandemic because we're all actually required to isolate a lot of the time. But, you know, if you notice someone's pulling away, they're not quite themselves, that's a big warning sign. Other warning signs that we look at are low mood. Anything for over two weeks is something we would be looking at. Um, you know, crying, suicidal ideation, um, other things, somatic difficulties or physical ailments. We see a lot of that in counseling. So maybe you start experiencing sleep difficulties or aches and pains, chronic headaches, maybe extreme tiredness. Those are all signs, um, as well as just general difficulties in regulating your emotions. Maybe your emotions are really flat. You don't feel much of anything or you're losing it because they didn't have your bagel at Tim Hortons, right? Like really extreme fluctuations in mood, um, irritability, those types of things. Um, we also see, uh, we're also seeing a lot of generalized anxiety, existential um, anxiety, um, what's the future going to look like, which does make a lot of sense. Panic. Um, a big thing we do see is the complete opposite where we, you might not notice this extreme structure. So someone's getting really structured almost to the point that it's causing problems. So excessive dieting or exercise, you know, trying to find control in one area because we don't have control in other areas of our lives. So that, that can be a warning sign as well. Um, that isn't as easy to notice right away. Um, I think another big warning signs is anything that's reckless, any reckless behavior, right? That's, in contrast to your life goals, right? So things like that, um, anything really out of the norm, out of the norm baseline. And, you know, I would just say, tell that person in your life, you know, I noticed this, pointing out a behavior or something that you noticed and let them know that you're concerned and that you're here to talk. I think that's the biggest thing we can do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I was just going to ask you, what can family and friends do to support this person? So that's the biggest thing, right? Just talk. Make sure that they yeah. they know that you're there for them, right? Yeah, and and you don't have to have answers. And sometimes just saying, "Hey, I'm feeling that too," can be the best thing that we can do because they don't feel alone in it, right? And oh, I'm not abnormal. Maybe I'm normal now that I could be feeling these things. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Absolutely. So, where can students? Look? Is this all available on the website at the university? Where can people be directed to for more more support yeah. and more information? So just going to the main ULEF website and then under student services, we're under there, counseling services at the university. And we have all of our information on there in terms of what all the range of services and groups we offer, how to book an appointment, uh, different resources in the community. So yeah, there's lots of things on there. Well, that is excellent advice and information. And Jennifer, it looks like we are getting out of time here, but Jennifer Ellis Toddington, registered psychologist and manager of the U of L's counseling services office. Thank you so much for joining me today and for sharing this information with us. Thank you so much for having me.